how big of a difference would it make if you had to downgrade your tennis racket from something like this to something like this? Graphite tennis rackets were introduced in the late 1970s and there is no doubt the game has improved since we switched from this to this. just how much of that is due to the actual racket. So today we are going to answer the age old question, is it the bow or is it the arrow? Wait, no, that's not it. Is it the, is it the, is it the Indian or is it the arrow? Is it the player or is it the racket? And I have recruited someone to help me figure that out. Our challenger today is Ezra. At a whopping 6'7", 230, his average serve speed is 165 miles an hour. He runs a four second 40 yard dash and he has never missed a first serve. Okay, so none of that is actually true, but he is one of the top high school players in Austin and was kind enough to come out and play me on his one weekday off per month. What's gonna happen today? I'm going to play Ezra in two sets, but the first set, he has to downgrade to this old tiny wooden racket. And then the second set, he gets to switch back to his awesome new Bavlot racket or whatever he plays. Can I beat him when he uses a wooden racket or does technique and skill trump technology? Let's find out. For those of y'all that are new to the channel, I started playing tennis in December, so I'm a huge underdog here. And Ezra early looks pretty good. Um, he drops the mic here and then attempts to hit a one-handed backhand, which he does not normally hit and does a pretty good job, but loses that point and I'm kind of struggling early. Surprisingly, his serve was really good with that tiny racket head. Um, he said he worked a lot on his kick serve and that thing was bouncing pretty high even with that old technology. It was this moment here when I knew I was in trouble when I hit this saucy lob he tracks it down and almost lands this tweener with that wooden racket. I would have lost my freaking mind if he would have pulled that off. You'll see us starting to get into some good points and unfortunately the mics were not working today. But Ezra said that he felt like he couldn't really let loose. One, because the strings were so loose they were probably strung at like 38 pounds or something. And two, obviously that racket head is just so small. We, see, we get a couple of shanks here, which honestly I was hoping for more of, but he's just playing really solid with that tiny racket. This is the first time of many that you'll see him put me on skates today. He double faults here. I get an opportunity and end up taking the first game. It takes really no time for Ezra to figure me out. He realizes I don't have a backhand and he just starts pounding it and I obviously struggle. It's pretty crazy, he's making that 50 year old racket really work for him. Now he's not really crushing any balls but watch him, he just makes me move all over the court and he's really controlling the ball well and um, he kills me this game. Easily the most impressive thing I saw was the amount of spin that Ezra was able to generate with his racket. Some of these serves are kicking at my head. It was crazy. Um, and he's doing this all with a racket from 1960. Unfortunately, it took me a while to get my serve going. You see me put one through the net right here, um, but it was out. Yeah, I had two double faults this game and you're just not gonna win games when you do that. Oh, 
So I'm down 3-1 here and desperately need a break, but he just won't let up with that wooden racket. Luckily he starts with the double fault and I start to find my groove a little bit and we play some of the best points of the match here in this game. I really like this point. It started out with a nice slice, and then the angle I find here is pretty sick. But then I just have no idea what I'm doing on this overhead right here. Luckily, I keep putting the pressure on him, start hitting it with some pace, and I get to this drop shot here which is pretty impressive, and take this point. <laughs> this game here starts out promising. I'm thinking I can get it all squared up at three, but the, the freaking wizard with the wooden racket is just a wall back there, and I just really, really struggle to beat him. Um, very impressive what he's doing with something he's never played with. It's a, it's a tiny, tiny head compared to what he's used to. I mean, completely different strings and he's just working me. And I end up losing this one again. No. There's a really funny sequence here after this point which I wish we were mic'd up for. It's really funny but Ezra aces me and just try to listen to what happens. I mean, what a guy, just apologizing for an ace. In my opinion, this is Ezra's best shot of the match coming up. I mean, to do this with a wooden racket, just paint the line with the backhand. But I hit pretty deep, that, that's insane. But I finally get my serve going here, and I'm able to pick up another game and stay in it. So up 5-3, Ezra's coming for the kill, and I mean literally, he's coming for the kill. He puts me on my butt here. <laughs> yeah, I almost, I almost died. Um, put me on skates, it was embarrassing. And then I think he got kind of used to the wooden racket and he starts serving really well, and it is, it's GG for me. You got the job 6-3. Very impressive play there. Just solid. I mean, your serve was good. Like, yeah, it wasn't bad. Like, I was serving surprisingly well. Yeah. I low key wish I could have hit an ace, but yeah. I mean, that's out of my control. That last one, that last one was very close to an ace. Um, he had me running too. He knows tennis strategy. Everyone <laughs> I play hits it pretty much right at me. He's got me moving all around the court, and he made me almost fall out of my shoes out there. <laughs> it was very close. <laughs> <laughs> so Ezra gets the dub, and you might have noticed he's wearing a cool wearable towel on his shorts. That is actually his mom's brand. Go follow them on Instagram right now. They are great people. That thing would be so helpful if you live somewhere humid and hot like I do. Now Ezra's getting back to his regular racket. What do you think is going to happen? Is he going to try more things, make more mistakes, or is he just going to destroy me? Comment right now and let's get into set two. So I come out hot with a nice serve, but when Ezra gets settled in, I mean, it's like playing with a different player. The balls are coming with more pace, um, he's got more control. All the things that the new technology says it offers, I mean, he, he, he got here. Look at that spin, and just puts me away. Have no chance. The serve, way better than it was with the wooden racket. I mean, just dominating me here early. So in this game, I serve really well, but it doesn't really affect Ezra. Look at that return back there if you want to rewind. I'm way out of position, and that happens a lot when I hit a good serve. So if you have any tips or comments on that, how I can get better, 
um, please let me know because I'm always out of position when I hit a good serve. But yeah, the good serves don't really affect this kid. During our break, I talked to Ezra about this problem and he suggested serving and volleying and explained it. And then the next game just started serving and volleying me and wins this game very, very easily. I have a nice serve here, but unfortunately I shank a ton of routine balls in this game, and so I'm just gonna spare your eyes from, from what happened. I will say I really, really love playing with better players. Um, it's a lot of fun, and I feel like I learn so much so fast when I play players of this caliber that, I, I don't know, I just think I get better. He was hitting me with these drop shots all game, and I have never really faced anyone who hits drop shots, but I got to every one. But once I'm there, I don't really know what to do with it, and I get away with one here. Um, that was a fun point. Then he starts hitting me with these serve plus one combos, and I'm pretty much toast. Way out of position on the return, even one side of the court wide open, and I get, I get burnt. And then Ezra's being really nice here. That ball's out. This ball's out, but he just wants a winner to finish it off. And he's gonna slice, come to the net, and say goodnight. So in conclusion, while Ezra showed that the player is way more important than the racket, the racket clearly does make a difference as he got significantly better once he got that graphite racket in his hand. All right, guys, that is all from Winners Only. Comment, like, subscribe. We will see you next time. Thanks for watching.